You knave, I challenge you to a duel, a battle of wit, so to say. I accept. That's good, because you didn't have a choice in the matter. We are here with the Idaho Renaissance Fair YouTube page, and we are doing a really fun game. It's Josh Danes and Tyson Stuckey here. Josh, why don't you give a little bit of history on what this game is? All right, so this game, it's called Rota, uh, and I'm not sure if that's pronounced right. It might have a rolling R, Rota. It's uh, cool. It's, it's true. R-O-T-A. It's called Rota. Uh, it feels like it's kind of a precursor to maybe checkers um, or or possibly chess. Uh, it's, it's an interesting strategy game. It was very popular in uh, in Rome before uh, when Rome was still an empire. Uh, it has uh, playing boards that are, can still be found around the entirety of the old Roman Empire, uh, all the way into England. Even um, they found them uh, across the entire length and, wet, and, and breadth of, of the uh, the old Roman Empire. Yeah, if you had a legion somewhere, you had boards. Because I mean, just like today, people got bored and they needed entertainment yep and this game is super simple and just easy to entertain because there is actual strategy josh and i have been playing with it for a little bit and we figured out a couple of points and some tips and tricks that we're going to share with you as we kind of go forward because it's a simple game again it's not like chess where you have multiple units that can do multiple things in this game, as you can see from the board itself, you have nine spots. There are eight in a circle and a center piece. And the whole point of the game is to get a line. You've got three units each, and the game happens in two different parts. Now, as we go, we're going to kind of talk about what we're looking for and what the main idea behind it is, because there's basically two ways of winning this game. And one of them, the most important one, is to make sure that your opponent only has one move to make. And we'll get there. So we're going to start with picking our pieces. Now, back in the day, they would use different color rocks. They would use glass. They would use whatever they had on hand as long as it looked different. It was one of the reasons this was such an easy game. You just knock your nine holes into a rock and then pick up some river rocks that are different colors and you have, uh, you have a board. Exactly. So. And they would get fancy, just like with chess sets. You know, you would get fancy checkers. You would get super fancy with those as well. Mm -hmm. So whoever gets, it's the gold, right? Silver. It's the silver one. Whoever gets the silver one starts. And I start. Very, very nice. So at this portion of the game, as you can see, the board is empty. So, again, the main point is to get a line. So, Josh, kind of explain what your thought is going into this. Okay, so, uh, the, the first, we're, we're going to start with the first section, the first phase of the game, and that is placing. So, uh, for the first phase of the game, you each take turns placing your tiles on the board, um, your tokens, your rocks, whatever it is. And, uh, like he said, the goal is to get it in a straight line across the center. And I think we're just going to stick with that one. We're not going to do the advanced for this game. Yeah. Um, so uh, there is an alternate rule where you can do three in a row around the outside. It's kind of tricky. We've honestly so. never even won that way. We've only ever won with a straight line. And the main reason for that, I feel, is because we were desperately trying to avoid the outside. Yeah. So my first placement is actually going to be on the outside. A lot of people are probably thinking, well, just put it in the middle like tic-tac-toe. It's a bad idea with this game. So I'm going to place my first one here, and now it's your turn. I am going to go directly across. And the reason I'm going directly across, as I'm setting this up, I want to make myself a triangle. Triangles in this game are very strong positions to have. And because I know Josh is going to go first, even if Josh is able to make his triangle, he's going to have to give that up in some form or another. Or we're just going to be skirting around the outside. Eventually, one of us is going to have to take a chance. And you'll see what we mean when we get there. Yep. So, uh, my next one, because I know he went there, I am going to go to 
Now I'm going to go here because I'm building my triangle. Yep. And so now I'm going to place mine here. Which actually works for me because I wanted this guy here. So when I was putting this together, this was the triangle I was personally hoping for. And this is a really good strong position to be in for Josh as well because it gives him a lot of wiggle room. And so originally, as I said, I was trying to get myself into a triangle. Now Josh has put himself in a position where he can go anywhere and he will be in a triangle. Yep. So. Oop. Which is good. It's going to jump. So we're in phase two, right? We had everything placed. We're in phase two. Now my now the goal is to move the pieces until you have formed that straight line. Um, you can you can only move the pieces in a straight line, and you can only move them. You you can't jump across a tile, right? So you can move this one here. Now, it doesn't show the straight line across, but you can move in a straight line across this way as well, if that's an open space. Yep, and as long as there's no one here, like I couldn't go here, right? that would be counted as jumping. Correct. So, I would still be here, but if Josh was up here, I could go over here, which is suicide. And we'll explain, actually, it's a really good time to explain why that is suicide. Uh, we'll explain that when we get to it. Okay. Yeah. That is fair. So. so. It is your turn. And I'm going to go here. Good move there. It's a good move. Honestly, that is a really good move. And my thought is, originally, I was going to go here, depending on what Josh did, and that would have set me up exactly like, exactly what Josh did. It's a very strong position to have. And I am going to go here, because that is going to force Josh Now obviously because there's only nine holes, a lot of these patterns are going to become predictable. The point of the game, honestly, is a lot of patience. You're waiting for someone to make the wrong move. And if they can make the wrong move... Which is what he did on his last move. Yeah. Because I have now won. Yep. There was no way I could get around it. It's a game of patience. If you can outpatience the person and you can get them to do exactly what I did, there was nothing I could do. I literally only had one move that I could make. And I put myself in that position because I'm foolish. So we go back <laughs> a couple of, of rounds and this is what the board looked like. And it was his turn. So he moved here. I'm not sure if he was hoping I would go here or move here or what. But he went there, and it gave me the opportunity to, to create me. this situation here. Here, he cannot move either of these two, and he has to move this one. And it does not matter which tile he moves that to, that opens up that middle place, which is directly in between. And I have taken his, his space. So you are right in your assumption that the center is the strongest point to be in, but you literally cannot fight over the center. Yeah. If you fight over the center, the game will never end. So, Here. had no choice. I had to retreat because you have to move. You can't just skip your turn. Yeah. So, then the alternate rule is that rather than just going across wise, you can also win if you have your three tiles in a row around the outside. And that, it doesn't change a whole lot but it changes a little bit in the opening strategy. So, if you would like to play another round. Yep, let's do round two. And okay. you get to pick. I gotta take a peek in the bag, so I didn't want that. And I will go second. Okay, so. My piece is here. So, for the alternate rule, I go there. 
Okay, and I'm gonna follow up on the side. And which he has, kills me immediately. He has just killed himself. Because now there's no way, it doesn't matter what I do. So, you have to be aware of how you're playing the game. Because that is, again, it, it's yep. like the three move win in chess. Yeah. Like, all you have to do is one silly thing, and the whole game is over. Yep. So, if that advanced rule is going to be in, you have to love your neighbor. You cannot let him <laughs> get away <laughs> with being on his own. Yeah. So, because if I'm going for the alternate win, then we get into this situation here. Which puts him in a really bad position. Because there's really only one thing he can do at this point. So, <laughs> you have to approach the game depending on the rules you play. There's really only the two that we found, but it's a very quick game if you make silly mistakes. Yeah, where... and it's easy to make silly mistakes Oh yeah, if I, you're in a hurry. I made one in that very first run. You know, I honestly thought I was doing something really smart, and in the end, I ended up killing myself because I put all of my options in Josh's hands. Yep. And that's the same with this. We have found that trying to get the three in a row at the beginning is almost a death sentence. It is. It is an absolute death sentence trying to get three in a row. The other death sentence is allowing yourself to have two of your tiles trapped. So in this instance, you have two of your tiles trapped. They cannot go anywhere. It does not matter what I do with this tile. I could move here. I could move here. I could, doesn't matter. These two are trapped. So the other game, he had, I had these two trapped. And again, that's two tiles that cannot move. Yep, and he utilized my piece. We can't jump pieces. So I killed myself. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even mean to. I thought I was doing something quite smart by extending the game to try and put myself in a position. Again, it's that patience. This game can last a long time if both people are really thinking and they're really taking their time. Yep. We, I mean, we sat for about a half hour on one game the other day, um, just kind of taking our time and, and, and it gets, it almost feels like you're in a stalemate, right? In, like in chess. And, and it tends to get you frustrated to the point where, okay, well, maybe if I try this move instead. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So in this game, again, as a quick recap, triangles are your friend. You want either a, a isosceles triangle or a right triangle, however you can get it. Triangles are very, very strong in this game. The main killer is going to be when you force your opponent to only have one move. If you can force your opponent to only have one choice, you've won the game because there is no option. So you are kind of crowding, you are trying to push around, and you're going to use triangles and the outside to do that for the majority of your game. Yep. So it, and it is super fun. Like we played before, like, like Josh said, we played for a half hour just on one game trying to outthink the other person. And you can distract with conversation. Yep. Like there's, there's so much. It's a good game for a couple of friends to play. It's super small. It's very easy to carry around, which is why the Legionnaires love the game. Yep. You could literally take your, your stones, you know, with you. They weren't heavy. They weren't going to take up a lot of space in your packs. And then as soon as you set up camp, if you were going to be in an area for a week, a month, a year, you had everything you needed to keep the boredom off when you weren't doing some other duty or chore. Yep. And, and then again, super small, super simple, super easy. If you didn't have any of your stones with you, it's not hard to pick up some stones and to take a chisel and just notch out the notches into a, into a, a, a larger flat piece of rock. I hope you enjoyed. We hope that your history is as fun as our history because as you can see, this particular set of history was literally all about entertainment and we will catch you on the next one. Huzzah! Huzzah.